Congressman Kimbo, welcome to The Big Story. Thank you. So what do you make of this? I mean, uh, this must be, I mean, at the very least, at its face, the, the words of the president uh, must be welcome to, to, lend, to, vice, to the vice president, to the party, to the House even. Yeah, it will. So I think it's a welcome news because I think uh, more than any other official in the last uh, six months, uh, Vice President uh, Lenny Robredo has been really in the bullseye of all these uh, unrelenting attacks. Mm. After uh, uh, Senator De Lima, uh, she's really been the, uh, the subject of uh, vociferous attacks. And, you know, frankly, we, we were getting set for an impeachment proceedings okay. against her. And, and frankly, we will... Uh, absolutely opposed. But the, uh, the president just made the declaration this morning uh, at 2.30 uh, in the morning, which really came as a surprise. Welcome surprise is that. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't know how the House leadership will, will behave. Uh, mm -hmm. We've always said that the uh, impeachments today are quite difficult to really swallow, whether it's for the president or the ombudsman or anyone for that matter, because they've been in office for barely, barely a year. I think it's uh, quite premature. But... Uh, Obviously, as far as the vice president is concerned, particularly the grounds are just uh, too shallow. It's, it's a sham uh, as far as we are concerned. And they have the numbers. You expect calls for a tit for tat with regards to uh, uh, Congressman Alejano's uh, initiative against the president? Uh, but uh, it, it, we're not comparing apples to apples. I mean, the complaint of uh, uh, Congressman Alejano, the Liberal Party of, uh, of Vice President Lenny, is, is no way not an iota uh, bit connected to it. Okay. So we don't see the connection. Of course, they're saying, some are saying that we are connected to it. In fact, we've already said that this early, many of us are not supportive of it. Okay. Uh, so that, sh that should, uh, in a way, uh, assuage any fears that they have. Okay, well, on a more, on a separate, but maybe a more constructive uh, way of looking at it, this does, it is welcome for the House of Representatives. Hopefully it minimizes the the political noise uh, as Congress resu uh, prepares to resume in May and a lot of things on the table, not the least of which the comprehensive tax reform program. Uh, what does this do in terms of uh, getting hopefully ho the Congress back on track in prioritizing these more difficult uh, discussions? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you just uh, said a very good point. Uh, there are many laws that are really much needed, quite pressing, and tax reform is, is really one of those. And I think what it does today is that it puts it now in the, in the forefront that we can actually uh, uh, be assured that many of these priority bills are going to be taken up uh, and given importance. It's because, no, yeah. because an impeachment, just, just to set aside the impeachment, will really bog down okay. the proceedings of the House and the Senate. Okay. Literally, they don't do any work. So I think taxes today have a better chance of getting passed. Okay. But I mean, the, Better is relative. Uh, is, is relative. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. now priority, and maybe maybe one way of uh, being optimistic about it is that maybe the president is also signaling to to talk about this. But but behind that is basically the premise that now that it's a priority doesn't mean it's any less messy. Uh, what are the chances? They're just diving straight into CTRP. The DOF said you know this was really prepared as a package. Many congressmen are saying no. It's it's just too difficult to to take it all in one go. What are the chances and what will be the approach when Congress assumes? Congress must, pass the, must, must deal with it and pass it as a package. There's no other way because mm -hmm. if you pass only one aspect, it's going to be too deleterious to the economy mm -hmm. and it's not going to be fair yes. to our financial managers and it's going to have a, a diabolical and long-lasting long effects on the economy. Mm -hmm. So we have to pass a package. The only thing that we're really at loggerheads with is what kind of a package are we going to, to come up with? Mm. As far as the DOF is concerned, it's really carte blanche. Mm. They want to impose for a comprehensive tax reform uh, program for the personal income tax earners, mm. you have like around 2.5 million who will benefit. Mm. But in exchange for that, you're going to have 23 million who will Big now loss. end up mm -hmm. paying new taxes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Meaning people who had not been paying before are now going to pay indirect taxes in the form of Excess tax on fuel. Yeah. Um, I just think that matter has to be really looked at. They do recognize that mm. we will be hitting people who, whom we should not be hitting, meaning yes. it's not going to be progressive yeah. for at least uh, 12 million people. Yeah, and not so, just people. I mean, it impacts directly on certain industries. I mean, uh, even the excess tax on fuel, for that example, is getting attacked, uh, is, uh, is causing concern on the one hand on the industry. It's even causing concern um, on the side even of environmentalists. People are saying it affects the CARS program of, of government. 
Uh, in the meantime, the, the, the environmentalists will say, you know, slapping an, an excise tax on fuel also will uh, impact on uh, a nascent biofuel industry, for example. Uh, that, uh, what, what's, how, how do you, what, what's the approach? How do you get people back on the same page? I think the, the DOF simply has to be uh, not tamad, hmm. not be lazy. So what they're trying to do is uh, they're trying to shortcut on the difficulties of tax administration. Okay. So we can really approach it on a more systematic and more targeted uh, manner. Mm. What does that mean? Yeah. You impose taxes on unleaded fuel. Yes. Um, you impose uh, taxes on uh, aviation fuel. Yeah. You can impose taxes on other fuel that's essentially being used by the upper market. Yeah. But they don't want to do that because it's difficult when some fl uh, uh, gases are tax exempt and some are not mm. because they're generally commingled and smuggling really takes place. Yeah. So. So when you say wag tamad, it, it goes to the old uh, debate about you know is about execution versus new taxes. Absolutely, and, and you, you know the dilemma there is that um, once you make an exemption like kerosene, like mm. LPG, mm. these are all uh, fuel uh, very sensitive to the lower income classes. Mm. Kerosene, for instance, they stand to collect around 390 million only, mm -hmm. but of the 390 million, 95 percent are used by the poorest of the poor, meaning. Yes the 10th and 9th decile of the, uh, of the population. Mm. So what gives? I mean, uh, you're trying to literally kill a mouse, but you're burning the entire house. Okay. So do I believe in excise taxes? Yes, I do. I think we should. Um, gas prices are so low today, mm. but we need to be able to target it so that it does not affect uh, a lot of people. And their answer is, we're sorry it's going to affect some people. What we're going to just simply do is give them a unconditional cash transfer. Mm. We've seen that with the CCT program that it's not entirely perfect. Okay. I think what, what is important for us is that we be able to churn out something that will have the least impact on the poorest of the poor. And okay. that those who don't pay taxes today don't end up paying more. Okay. That's a, we just want it to be progressive. There mm. are ways by which we can collect. There is no rhyme or reason why there is not a single proposal on better tax administration. Yeah. It's just about coming up with new taxes. Okay. Just lastly is that the data doesn't lie. You look at the data on fuel taxes today, uh, most of fuel today don't have excise taxes except for, for unleaded fuel. Yes. But while the consumption since uh, 2006, when it was actually reimposed, mm. um, while consumption has been increasing, mm. collection has been decreasing. Yeah. Because of smuggling. We I can understand that too. if you look at the bottom line on the revenue side, no, I mean, execution will, will help to, to raise the coffers of the, you know, but an excise tax, a pass-through tax, it goes straight to the, to the end user. And uh, many congressmen, Congressman Pino, for example, has said, you know, we will not support anything that will have any inflationary uh, effect. How do you pass an excise tax on, on fuel? I mean, notwithstanding the discussions about execution and be do better and plug the leaks and so on, but how do you pass an excise tax on fuel that's not inflationary? It will be inflationary, and we cannot avoid it. Mm -hmm. any, any kind of indirect tax, especially of this magnitude, will be inflationary. But I think it's, a, it's an issue that will only be felt for the first three years. Okay. And later on, we can uh, really sustain and absorb it. But really, the leakage just today, like I said, is that I don't think it's going to work. Okay. I think that's a more difficult question that needs to be answered. Okay, Congressman Kimbo, thank you for joining us in the big story.